love you, Akadosh Baruch Hu. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak in your name, to be a messenger for your word. And I appreciate that. And you should know that if you're listening to me for the first time, that over here you're going to get the word of God as pure as you can get it. And it all starts from love and you better have a healthy amount of fear. Don't ever think it's not true. Reshit Chokhmah Yerat Hashem You understand? The foundation to wisdom is to fear God. That's wisdom. Understanding is shun evil. So I want to show you how to get peace in your life. So let's say if you're like me where you cannot tolerate injustice, right? So sometimes you see something, you want to say something, right? So let me give you the best advice. 99% of the time, don't say nothing. Why? I tell you why. Number one, if they're doing that, in their mind, they already think this is normal. So now you're taking a chance because you don't know. It could be a nice guy, not a nice guy. So that's already 50-50 chance. Usually they're not nice, usually rude. I'm talking like a dog owner does something. You see, that's ugly. You use your imagination, you know what I mean? So you come up to him and say, listen, could you do me a favor? You know, you should pick up after your dog. It's, you know, it's not respected in the neighborhood. Something like that. He's going to go nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Check, yo. I tried it, yo. The ones I met, yo. Rude. Arrogant, yo. And you come up to them so nice. Not all. Some of them are nice, but the nice ones you don't have problems with. The dog barks at you, they're going to say something. Like, yo, I'm sorry. You know, or they'll say something to the dog. Like, Benny, stop. <laughs> yo, this one rabbi, yo, yo. He was like, you think the Israelis respect the Americans? They don't. So this guy goes, prove it. You know what he said? He goes, then why do they name all their dogs American names? Bobby, Frankie, Jimmy. <laughs> it's just a joke, you know what I mean? But life ain't a joke. Life is super serious, you know what I mean? So let's get back into what we were talking about. Making peace. So this is how you make peace. So when you see something that you want to say something, don't say anything. You know why? Because if this person is wicked, now you're attached to him. That's it. Especially if you live in the same neighborhood. And especially if you live in the same building, bro. On the same floor. Yo, you think it's not possible? That <laughs> happened to me one time. Yo, there was a lady. I'm going to tell you this. I don't tell my business. But maybe like 10 years ago. So maybe less. But yo. <laughs> the eleva- all the elevators are broken. So only the service elevator works, right? So we're like squishing into the service elevator. And there's this Russian guy standing by the door. He's the one that presses like close, open, whatever. He just happens to be there. So people go, what floors? So he's pressing the floors, whatever. So there's this lady there with her dog. And she wants it to go. But people are coming. So she doesn't want, you know, she doesn't want him to hold the door. She wants him to close it. But he's like trying to be nice, waiting for the people. But the people come. They see it's so packed. They don't even want to come. So this guy, in the meantime, he pressed open. And then he was supposed to press close. But then he pressed open again. So everybody on the elevator, nobody says anything. It's an old Russian guy, bro. Like maybe he doesn't even speak English. So maybe he got confused. Who knows? So we don't say nothing. But she, she goes nuts. So she goes to him. What, you don't know how to work an elevator? If you don't know how to work an elevator, don't stand by the buttons. Something like that. And then she said another thing. And I was like, yo. So I had to say something because I could not tolerate injustice today. Keep my mouth closed. Praise to Hashem. I look at their face. If I see that they look kind of nice, even then I might not say anything. Because even then you don't know. Yo, better not to say nothing when your mouth is closed. You cannot attach to the wicked. You know what I mean? Just keep it moving. And usually those things happen for a minute and go away. So just don't say nothing, yo. Don't say nothing. Trust me, when your mouth is closed, you can't get in trouble, bro. Trust me. Even Hashem is telling you that when the Kohen Gadol goes inside the holies, the holies, it's a brief prayer. Why? Why a brief prayer? It should be crying, screaming, please, this, that. It should be a two-hour prayer. Ah, two minutes. Why? To teach you not to talk too much. Say what you got to say and keep it moving. Don't waste time. Don't waste your words. That's really what it is, yo. Don't want to connect to these people, yo. Better not to say anything. Happened to me a couple of days ago. I almost forgot my own rule. 
So I was about to say something and right away a voice came to me in my head and said, you know, he might be wicked. Better not to say anything. Right away. And the first thing I said, you know, it's the first thing I said. I said, thank you, Hashem, because I know that was God telling me that, yo. Just reminding me because in life, you know, you forget. You're living, you're this. It's the last thing you're thinking about is some guy's going to do something. Yo, man, come on, man. A lot of these issues that I see is with these dogs, yo. This particular issue I was just talking about is they come on the grass, yo, yo. <laughs> we pay for the landscaping. The, the, the building doesn't even care. And everybody just comes on the grass with their dog, bro. They destroy the grass. Some of the dogs, you know, cover it, so they destroy the grass. And they do nothing. And the landscapers come, and they have to come again, and they have to fix this. And all the building has to do is just tell the security guards, yo, if you see anybody on the grass, tell them to get off the grass. Put a sign after a week. Everybody knows. That's it. The people come, the people come with their dogs all over the grass. They pick it up. One guy goes to me, but we pick it up. He said, so what? You're destroying the grass. Yo, what are you talking about? That was, ugh, when I used to say something. Now I don't say nothing, yo. That's it. Yo, I'm telling you, yo, the world is like that, bro. Give that advice to your kid. It's great advice, man. When you have an obligation to say something, you say something. And not only that, also know, <laughs> this is so true, yo. Let the evil run its course. There's a guy in the neighborhood, he has a dog barking all night. He's rude, arrogant, just like the dog. Him and the dog, bayachad, with the same dog. This is arrogant, he's rude. He's rude, he's arrogant. He barks, he yells. Get out of here with this, yo. You shouldn't even have a dog if you like that, yo. The dog is going to take after the owner, just like it did in Stoneman Amor. It became gay. Because the people in Stoneman Amor became gay, yo. What you know about that, yo? Yona and Ninve. Let me tell you quick about that. You see a non Jew do something wrong? Correct him. Again, not some stranger. Maybe somebody you know, somebody you met at work. It doesn't really matter. You'll correct him in a respectful way. Rebuke in a healing manner, yo. Don't. Yeah, the word rebuke already sounds strong, but it really means just correcting. In a stronger way But even then Do it with peace We learned it from A lot of people yo Moshe Rabbeinu Got mad at the people It was a fail A fail yo When you get mad You fail Even if you're One gazillion percent Right You're right I'm right I'm dead But you don't understand That's my That's the best yo That's my Somebody in my family Like this yo <laughs> I don't want to say Wicked yo Because I want to be Respectful But yo Every time he does Something that you're like, yo, are you kidding me? Yo, you're a man of Torah. How could you do that? No, but you don't understand. Yo, we do understand. That's the problem, yo. Ah, it's not good. Not good. Akadosh Baruch Hu, this is what happens when most of your children leave the Torah, bro. And then this is, I'm talking about a guy who studies Torah, who does, yo, come on, man. Stop, stop. If you see a person that's all day studying Torah and he's rude, then you should know he's not studying for Hashem. Now you should definitely know that, yo. No way that's for Hashem. If it was for Hashem, it would be calm. Just the way Hashem came to Elijah, yo. In a whisper. Not in a hurricane. Not in a wildfire. And not in a tornado. No. In a whisper. That's beautiful, yo. Don't rebuke the people. Don't get too harsh. Zachariah ben Yehodia. If I'm not mistaken, he did. He was standing above the people. He got angry. Yelled at them on Shabbat. They went nuts. They stoned him on Shabbat. And it says that he... Ah, yeah, yeah, I don't even want to say it, but I'm going to tell you what it says. It says that he was like, he was wrong because he was standing above them. He rebuked them. He got angry. And he's partially guilty even though he said to Hashem, revenge my death. And Hashem did. With Nebuchadnezzar. But that's not the point. The point is he, he was guilty of something. What was he guilty of? I tell you what he was guilty of. Of bringing more sins upon the people. What a beautiful lesson. You want to correct? Correct. But do it like God would do it. With respect. Correct with respect. I love that, yo. Ooh, that's dope. Ooh, I like that a lot, yo. I might call this video that, yo. Correct with respect. You're going to correct somebody? Make sure you do it respectfully, yo. Don't ever think you're above somebody because Hashem will switch it real quick. He'll reverse it. Just like He gave it, He'll take it away. You were rude to this dude. Hashem is going to flip the scene. Now you're going to be the one that maybe needs help. He was poor, so you dissed him. Now you're going to be poor. He's going to diss you. Crazy how it works, yo. You better be careful. You call it karma. Call it whatever you want. I call it God, yo. Oh, October 7th, you got revenge. No, we didn't get revenge. That's called justice, yo. You can call it whatever you want. 
when the revenge is justified, it's not revenge, yo. Get it through your head. You come and attack, and then we destroy, and then we're to blame. Get out of here with this dumb. I don't even want to get into it. I don't even want to get into it. You know why? Because a fool will mock the wisdom of your words. That's why I don't even deal. These Democrats, yo, they put Trump in jail, convicted felon. That's the new thing. No matter what you say to me, the convicted felon, 34, 34. Daddy, fuck it out of here, yo. These people are mentally demented. Trump derangement syndrome. Hating destroys their hater. Keep hating him. In the end, it's going to destroy you. I said about the other day, Nicole Wallace on MSNBC, I don't even say names, bro. Barely. But when I do, it's to make a real, real strong point. On her tombstone, it's going to say Donald Trump. Why? Because he was the cause of her death, yo. What are you, crazy? Hating destroys the hater, whoopee. You saw the way she had to say convicted. She couldn't even say convicted. She was choking up, good. That was her nishama telling her, be quiet, yo. Stop dissing this dude. Especially when he's down, yo. They claim he's rude. His tweets are rude. And then look at the way they talk about him, yo. Worse than he was. These people are crazy, yo. Any Democrat, yo, I would never get into it ever, yo. Because I'm already smart enough to know from King Solomon. Like I already told you, yo. A fool will mock the wisdom of your words. And you know what King Solomon said about the fool? Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool in his folly, yo. What are you, crazy? That's a Democrat. That's a fool in his folly, yo. Get away. Get out of here with this, yo. Cannot. I'm sorry. I could sparkle. What they did to him is so dirty and nasty, yo. And when you play with justice, truth, and peace... Hashem's gonna destroy the world. What do you think? He'll make a new world where there's justice, truth, and peace. What do you have? Does he have to keep the world? He doesn't have to keep the world to make a million worlds, yo. What do you think? You think he needs this world with the corruption, the lying, the raping, the videotaping, and then sending it to the dad, yo? Celebrating, yo, yo. I killed dead Jews. I killed dead Jews. Yo, 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 yo. yo. Yo, yo, a billion debts on his soul and everything attached him for eternity, yo. What kind of people are these, bro? You think Hashem is going to keep the world around with people like this in it, yo? Come on, man. Get out of here, yo. Excuse me, Hashem. I didn't even get angry, yo. I got emotional. It's a big difference, you know what I mean? But come on, man. Then I think Shani Luke, yo. What a disgust. Then I have to hear the dad. I'm going to talk about this quick. I don't like talking about this ever, yo. Ever. Ever. I'm just going to say it like this. They defiled the daughter of God, yo. That's it. They did it to Jacob when they raped Tina. Here they raped the daughter of God, yo. Ooh, what do you think God is going to do? He hasn't done anything really yet that crazy that you would think he would have done by now a billion percent. I thought Hashem would, that's it, Mashiach will come the next day. October 7th, October 8th, the Mashiach was already here. That's it, that's the world. Nah, yo, <laughs> six months, eight months. Only a chef knows when he's going to destroy them, yo. But you have to see them starving to death and eating their children. Then you would know justice was served, yo. Like this, and you think that's too harsh? Then you're a terrorist, yo. And I wouldn't let you near my baby ever, and I don't even have one. But if I did, you wouldn't even be able to hold it, even if you were my sister. Get out of here with this, yo. A real person knows that justice, truth, and peace comes before everything. Before everything. I remember this one rabbi told me, yo, that's how I knew he wasn't a real, real rabbi, yo. Amazing speaker, this, that little arrogant, whatever. But at the end of the day, brought a lot of Jews back to the Torah. Brought me, helped me keep Shabbat because he scared me like, yo, <laughs> you're going to lose your eternity. You're like, well, this, that, yo. I was like, wow. Start to think about it. Yo, I was a secular Jew. What did I know about all this, yo? So then I started to think. So the fear, yo, that's the foundation. The wisdom is to fear God. And I thank him for that. And I'm grateful for that, yo. But for sure I knew he wasn't 100% real. You know why? He was too strict. He was, you tell me, Dait Sadiq. And I'll explain to you what I mean. I remember I said to him, can my mother ever get to heaven if she doesn't keep Shabbat? And she doesn't break it on purpose. That's another thing. A real rabbi will tell you, if you break Shabbat on purpose to provoke the anger of God, for sure you're going to get karet and have a nice life for eternity. If you're doing it because you were brought up in Sudan and you barely knew Torah, you grew up in a masadla, what do you want? You didn't even go to yeshiva. So what do you know? And I told him all this, yo, and he said, I should go to hell! Just go to hell! You don't keep your mail, go to hell! 
And I remember thinking I was so despondent. I was like, yo, what kind of a God is this, yo? My mother's the nicest lady that ever lived. <laughs> ever. Yo, you don't even know. I'm not going to sit here, yo. I'll do a whole speech about her one day, yo. Then you're really going to know who my mother is, yo. She used to stay up till 2, 3 in the morning, yo. Looking between the blinds to see when I was going to come home. And I used to get mad at her. How ignorant was I, yo. Instead of hugging her and kissing her that she was so worried about me. The fact that she even let me go out with my friends, yo. 19 years old, growing up. Come on, man. Wow. Buck wild, yo. Used to run around with kids. I was not with a good group. <laughs> we lived in a really bad neighborhood. We didn't have money. We came from Israel. And then, you know, took time till we moved out to a better neighborhood. But bottom line was, she used to wait up for me and look between the blinds, yo. I remember when I broke my leg. I was in Israel. She called me every single day for a month, if I'm not mistaken. Every day. How's your leg? I'm praying for you. Every day, yo. You don't understand what the love is, yo. When I do something wrong, she used to tell me to my face. I remember I was dating this girl. <laughs> yo, this is my mom. You want to hear my mom? Here's my mom, yo. That's it. I'm going to tell you this story. Tells you all you need to know about my mom. So I was dating this girl when I was like, I don't know, 17, 18. Yo, pretty girl. And, you know, I was like, come on, secular Jewish kid. Like, come on, man. I was not like a good boyfriend. You know, I was a little rude. I used to tease her. You know, whatever. Just not, yo. Just not good. So my mother used to tell her all the time, yo, what are you doing with my son? He's not a good person. You don't see. Leave him alone, bro. Stop. He's not respectful. He doesn't respect you. He says it's a joke, but he sees it bothers you. And he continues. And she was a billion percent right. Because that's how I was, yo. Only the Torah broke that, yo. I will break the pride of your arrogance, yo. And he did. And he did. And he'll keep doing it if your arrogance gets big. Let me tell you something, man. When you're arrogant, that's arrogant. When you teach somebody... And just to get a rise out of them or you know what I mean even if you know and you hug them after whatever it is nah man that's not respectful bro sorry and you do it all in the name of being fun it was just a joke nah no, every joke has some truth yo remember that yo I don't like telling my business yo I only told my business I'm gonna tell you why I told you that business in honor of my mother but really in honor of Hashem you know why cause I want you to learn treat women with the utmost respect and I'm gonna tell you why and the Torah taught me this Hashem taught me this Number one When God first gave the Jews the Torah He gave it to the house of Jacob Who's the house? The one who's in control of the house Who's that? The women They didn't sin with the golden calf They made sure that their husbands were Ready to procreate Even though they were despondent And they were slaves And they didn't want to But they beautified themselves Because they knew That maybe somebody would give birth To the Redeemer and not only that, they wanted to populate the world with Jews. And Hashem made miracles. And Hashem will continue to make miracles. And I just want to say, Kaddish Baruch Hu, please forgive your children, yo. They don't know any better, yo. They don't know any better, man. How many Jews I've met that could have saved their soul and they just didn't even want the wisdom, yo. They got so sucked into this secular lifestyle that they can't even imagine you don't keep Shabbat. It's going to be a problem. And by the way, just so you know, if you don't keep Shabbat, even because you have desires, this and this, but you try, and you really, really tried, and I mean really tried, you know what I mean, crying, you tried, you didn't, you're not even going to get punished. You're not even going to get punished. You know how I know? Because in Shemaim, they give you credit for trying. Yes, you might have to clean your sin here or there. Let me break it down to you so you really understand, right? So I just told you that if you really, really, really tried to keep Shabbat, and in the end you didn't keep Shabbat, that you will not get punished for not keeping Shabbat. For sure you will not get karet. How do I know? I'll tell you how. Because when you try, it's as if you did it. I'll give you a beautiful story to illustrate, yo. There was a king. He had a beautiful daughter. There were a hundred soldiers that were single. He said to them, does anybody want to marry my daughter? They all jumped up and said yes. He said, no problem. I built a palace. She's going to be on the fourth floor. Whoever gets up to the fourth floor can marry her. They all agreed. He left them off in the morning. He said, you have 24 hours. I'll come back the next day. Comes back the next day. Psh, 80 of them already bounced. Yo, they were tired. Nobody can get in. People are outside. People are disgruntled. Some of them are mad at the king. Throwing insults. Of course, the king had them seized and we don't even want to tell you what happened yo but the king went in and he got up to the second floor and he saw one of the guys there 
So he's on the floor crying. He's like upset, you know. He took all this effort for nothing. He tried so hard, but he failed. So the king told him, stand up. So he stood up and he looked the king dead in the eye. So you know what the king told him? Congratulations. You're my new son-in-law. So he looked at the king and he said, what do you mean? You said that I have to get to the fourth floor. I'm only on the second. So he says to him, you don't understand. I wanted to see who really wanted to marry my daughter. Nobody can get to the fourth floor. Only my daughter knows the code to get up there. I can't even get up there. But I'm telling you, I wanted to see who really wanted to marry her the most. And you did. Therefore, you won. You understand what it means to try. You understand what it means to get credit as if you tried. I'll give you another great example. You're walking in the street, you and your friend, and an old lady falls, God forbid, and you go to help her, and he gets there before you do and lifts her up. Do you still get credit for the mitzvah? So the satan is going to come and say, well, I don't want to say the satan, some evil, wicked man is going to, but you didn't do it! So you don't get credit, what do you think? You think you can get credit? You didn't even do it! He's these wicked, disgusting, yo! Liars, pranksters, shamers, evil. I think of this Jamie Raskin, yo. How did he do it, yo? Just like this, I'm gonna show you how much Lashon Ra a person can speak. That's why you get leprosy. That's why you get solitary confinement. That's why they push you away from the camp. That's why they remove you from the camp. They don't even want to see you. Even Miriam Hasva Khalil, she didn't even do it in a bad way, yo. Think about it. Miriam said to herself, when he was the king of Kush. He wasn't with his wife because she was a Canaanite. But this woman is not a Canaanite. She's a Midianite. So he should be with her. Why is he not with her? Something like this, she says. Ooh, how Hashem punished her seven days outside of the camp. And I'll never forget what he said. If her father were to spit in her face, would she not be embarrassed for seven days? Yo! When I tell you Hashem is the most classiest, the symbol of classiness. And he talks like that. Why? To show you how despicable that sin is. That she's a big sadekin. So obviously he's going to be extra strict with her. He's not going to be like that with you. He's not going to make an analogy like that, yo. But you should know that if he's like that with Miriam, he's also going to judge you for that, yo. That's for sure. That's what it is about this Jamie Raskin. It's the arrogance of death, yo. When he says he's a pilferer of documents, two-time impeached, murderer, liar, con man, uh, salivating at the mouth, yo, like a demented dog, yo. Yo, I'm sorry, because it's work to talk about your children like this, but this is what it is, yo. He doesn't stop, yo. He's a racist, anti-Semite. How can he be an anti-Semite? His daughter married a Jew and converted, and he's with it. But he's an anti-Semite. These people are really have Trump derangement syndrome. They're crazy, yo. He destroyed the economy. Meanwhile, we had the best economy. Crime is down. Crime is through the roof. Through the roof, yo. No matter what they tell you with their dumb statistics. Playing with numbers all day just to make it look the way they want to look. That's why I get like this when I talk about That's why I hardly talk about them. Because I get Democrat derangement syndrome. DDS, yo. God forbid. Get them out of your head, yo. These people are seriously demon sent. That's what they did. They got possessed by the Satan to come and destroy America. That's it. No matter what they said, they could yell and scream, Joe Biden did this. He changed the prices on the medication. Meanwhile, nobody can eat. She's not even alive because she's starving to death. So how could she take the medication? Yo, get out of here with this. Yo, yo, I'm so sorry, yo, to get so excited about it, yo. I don't like to raise my voice, yo, like this, yo. But I can't. I cannot, yo. cannot tolerate that in justice, yo. That's disgusting because it's millions of lives, yo, that they play with, yo. They lie to them, yo, yo. They make Donald Trump look like, now that I told you, the last one, this is the best. He told you he's an anti-Semite, he's a racist, he's a bigot, he's a pilferer of documents, he gives away nuclear secrets, he's buddy-buddy with Russia, he, he did this, he did this, he's a sexual abuser, he, oh man, he lies. He deceives, he's deceitful, he's a con man, he's a thief, he's a god out of here, yo. And the best, to top it all off, the cherry on top, he's a convicted felon. That's their new one, bro. 
They love that. You could go say he saved the state of Israel from Hamas when he was president. <laughs> but he's a convicted felon. That's what they'll tell you, yo. That's how sick and demented it is, yo. <laughs> and you think he didn't save Israel? He did. Because you saw the minute he was out of office, look what's going on in Israel, yo. A war broke out. You think Hamas would have attacked? They wouldn't. They didn't have money. Iran, they didn't have money. So where'd they get all the money from Joe Biden? Lifting the sanctions and then making sanctions, knowing they could skirt around it, playing dumb to the American people. Yo, Blinken? And who's this other guy, yo? Who's this other guy? Man, I gotta get these people out of my head, yo. I just wanna name this other guy because he's even worse than all of them, yo. Kirby, yo. Kirby, yo, yo. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You, KJP, whatever her name is, Kareem Jordan. Yo, get up. Yo, yo. They lie to the American people. I've never seen anything like that in my life, yo. With a straight face, they're gonna tell you the crime is down, the economy is great, everything's fine, and the border is what. And the best is we say, what about the border? The Republicans didn't pass it to Congress. Such a lie. He could reverse everything the way he did the first day he was in office, and then all the things he did with the pipeline, yo, shutting down the pipeline, giving this to Russia. Yeah, yeah, these people, bro, you don't understand, man. It's dangerous. You know how I know? Because it's like the food. Don't eat Oreo cookies. You know why? Because I'm telling you, it'll get you sick. After years and years of eating that, it's too delicious. When food is too delicious like that, don't eat it. Trust me when I tell you. I know it sounds crazy, yo. Don't look at this food, man. It's craziness. Look at your shampoo. Look at all the chemicals they put in shampoo. Yo, I've never seen anything like this. They take food. They strip it of all the nutrients. Add it back with chemicals, dyes, this, that, and then feed it to you and tell you it's natural. Yo, these people, yo, yo, you don't understand, bro. Like I told somebody about dentists, bro. I'm sure there's some good dentists out there. May God bless them, yo, for helping the people take care of their teeth. But most of them, they're wicked. You know how I know? Go to a dentist, yo. For 20 years, you went to him. Did he ever tell you to brush your tongue once? One time. Did he say you brush your tongue? Maybe he did. Most of them don't. Because that's where 90% of the bacteria is, is on your tongue. So why wouldn't they tell you that, yo? I don't mean to diss dentist, yo. But I'm just telling you, if you're clever and you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying is true, yo. Most of them are in it just for the money, bro. Very disgusting. And then they're going to tell you, no baking soda is bad for your teeth. So why are my teeth whiter than the wall, yo? What are you talking about? Yo, these people are crazy, yo. They're going to try to like everything they're going to... Yo, they, tried, they said they sold out, yo. They sold out. She's trying to convince me that baking soda, and it's abrasive, and it's this. It's no problem. You're right. No one's brushing their teeth. I don't even brush my teeth, yo. I have a special tool that I scrape my teeth with, and that brushes my teeth better than anything, yo. You don't even understand the brushing your teeth. That's going to mess up your gums, yo. You're going to push them back. It's not a good look. I'm going to give you a quick class, yo, right now. If you have a blessing from God, you're listening to this, and this is going to help you tremendously. Any joint pain, arthritis, gout, I don't care what it is, anything with the blood, which is what basically gives you health, celery, bro. I don't like chewing celery. It's too rough on the teeth. I don't really like it, yo, but you know what I do? I buy a celery powder. I mix it with water, and I drink it every day. Now it's every day, God willing, man. Bleed that there, yo, I try to. And you know, I know I have to drink it every day because I have this... I uh, hurt my hamstring. Yo, it's none of your business. I'm not even going to tell you, yo. <laughs> you want peace in your life? Don't tell your business to nobody. All I can tell you is trust me, yo. Drink it. It will get rid of any pain. Your pain in your Achilles. Pain in your hamstring. You know, a nagging pain. A dull pain. Help tremendously with that, yo. Tremendous. You have pain, like, in your thigh, right? So you want to play ball. You feel good, but you know it hurts a little bit? Drink celery. Juice. <laughs> yo, you will feel... Yo, you'll see. You'll see. Opens up the blood vessels, yo, so the blood goes through. Gives you more oxygen. It's very, very healthy. You don't understand. What else I wanted to tell you? Okay, with the teeth, real quick. Brush your tongue twice a day in the morning before you go to bed. Uh, get a scaler. Get under the gum line, bro. They'll never tell you this in the dentist's office, yo. Get under the gum line and just gently take all the biofilm. The biofilm is all that white, ugh, that disgusting, yo, 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 that's gross, yo. You'll see when you scrape your tongue. You'll see a lot of biofilm. Gross, nasty. And that's sitting on your tongue. You go to sleep with that. You don't even know it's there. If there are people that haven't brushed their tongue in 30 years, yo. Wondering why they have a cavity every other Thursday, yo. God forbid. 
Lo Alenu, but you get the point, yo. I'm just telling you because I love you, bro. I'm just trying to help you, yo. Uh, rinse your mouth, do oil pulling, that's for sure, yo. Coconut is the best. I heard sesame seed also, so I do a mix, but I think coconut will probably be the best, yo, because it also whiten your teeth as a little extra. <laughs> Brush your teeth with baking soda if you really want your teeth to get white, yo. I tried pretty much everything. That will get your teeth the whitest, yo. But salt, just, yo, yo, you don't even understand the power of salt. Craziness, yo. Helps heal real good. Great for the gums, yo. Trust me when I tell you, yo. Gargle and swish salt around in your mouth with water. Make sure the water's clean, pure. Let's tap garbage, yo. And God forbid you don't have money, you can't afford water, I don't know what. You have to drink from the tap, let it run 30 seconds before you even touch that water, yo. The water piles up a lot of bacteria, a lot of chemicals in there, arsenic, lead, and I don't even want to tell you what else. Everything in the toilet pretty much gets recycled. Yo, I don't even want to... Yo, bro, this work. That's why I can't wait for Mashiach, yo. Just for that alone, it's going to be worth it. Nobody's, there's no waste. Nobody's going to go to the bathroom. After a thousand years, after God knows how many years in the process, eventually that's how it's going to be, yo. Yo, the Mashiach. May he come this second, yo. Why? Because when he comes, all the wicked die. That's the best blessing ever. Think about it. All the stress you have in your life is from wicked people, yo. <laughs> Hashem will get rid of them. He's not afraid, yo. He'll wipe their face off the face of the earth, yo. But you don't know. That's what they told Rav Avner, the third letter of every word is an acronym for you and that means I will erase their face from the memory of the earth it's an Azinu they got fat and kicked you understand what it means they got fat and kicked they got arrogant they didn't want to be around God they didn't need God anymore they felt secure and Hashem destroyed yo you know what Hashem will do <laughs> yo you don't even know bro well you know one lady told me I'm not afraid of God I'm pressuring me to feel God I said, you're afraid of the cop with the radar gun. You're not afraid of God. He does sin calls, tsunamis. What do you get out of here with this, yo? You don't even see how the Satan is fooling you, yo. She got the point. Thank God, yo. But still pushing her love, 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 love. Love is beautiful. But if it doesn't have fear mixed with it, it's not real love. Real love is fearing God. That's what I'm telling you, yo. Real love is fearing God. Absolutely. Because it will prevent you from sin. You know why? Because it's human nature. Everything's love. Everything's great. You might forget God. You might fall into a sin. You might not be on guard. The fear puts you on guard, yo. Like this one guy told me, why do you wear these things? And it was my fault. I told him a little secret. I shouldn't have done that, yo. Because I apologize. Because he caught me off guard. I wanted to like impress him and teach him a little bit about the tzitziot. Because he was so interested. But I know you're not allowed to teach to the uncircumcised so I was wrong for that yo I should have just told him yo it's a uniform that we wear to remind us that God is always watching sin so we don't sin you know why because when you don't sin you're pure when you're pure you're holy when you're holy you have heaven in your hand forever yo what you mean ah Hashem you're too great yo that's what it is yo <laughs> to encompass his might and his power is to not be human. You have to be unhuman to grasp the full power of his might, yo. Like the angels, yo. Maybe they do. And even then they don't even know. Because he consults with them, meaning they don't even know. So he has to tell them. <laughs> yo, I cut his baruch yo. Why is the world, like, not with it, yo? They're not with it. They got sucked into the sin. The sin was sweet. Remember, yo, if you sin out of desires, you still have a chance to save your soul. And if you try and try and try, I'll give you another good proof about trying. Eliezer ben Dordea, bro. He had the worst sins with women, bro. Sex crimes, go check in the Torah. Fire, burning, dying, this. That's the worst, bro. 3,000 with the golden calf, 26,000. With the modesty, with the Midianite women, bro. You don't understand. You're not understanding, bro. Hashem is not with the modesty, bro. It says in the Torah that when you see something uncovered, that should be covered, he runs from that place. You will not find the divine presence of Hashem over there. And when the divine presence is not there, guess who's there? You guessed it, the Satan. That's it. Now it's going to be sins. 
It's a wedding, mixed dancing, so there's a modesty. Hashem's not there. What do you think is going to happen? They hook up, she's drunk. Abortion. Could be. You're going to say, oh, you're exaggerating. Am I really? Am I really, bro? Because if that happens 10% of the time, that's already too much, yo. Am I really, yo? Like my nephew told me, oh, what, is, what kind of a god is this? He doesn't want me kissing women. He gave me a desire to kiss women, and now you're telling me not to kiss girls? I told him that. I think he's like a little player, bro. I said, stop kissing these girls, bro. You're going to get in trouble with this, bro. It goes against the... What are you talking about? Why would he give me the desire? I said, because he already knows. You know how intelligent God is? He sees five trillion steps ahead. He knows that the kissing is going to lead to touching. The touching is going to lead to other things. And then you're going to really get busy. And that's it. God forbid you get pregnant. God forbid a billion times. Lord, later. God forbid. But this is a possibility. So be careful. This is what Hashem is telling you, yo. Like this one dude, he's with this Brazilian girl, yo, at a club, comes home the next night, they go to bed together, he wakes up in the morning, she's not there, he checks his wallet and his jeans, he checks to see if she stole his money, she bounced, fine, he took a deep breath, went back to sleep, got up, went to the bathroom to watch his face, know what it said on the mirror, welcome to the club, I have AIDS, yo, you're not understanding, bro, and I think this guy died, yo, 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 even fighting, Young, a woman and a man sit together, eventually they'll hate each other. Just fighting in the street, the cops roll by. You're going to get arrested, God forbid, for that, yo. It's going to bring you a lot of drama, yo. The Torah already warned you with the women, yo. They already told you, bro. Stop. So Hashem is already understanding where it's going to lead to, yo. So He's telling you, no, don't kiss her, yo. Sorry. You want to kiss her? Marry her. Then you can kiss her all day. And even then, chill. You understand? Don't get addicted to this physical world, bro. Because at the end of the day, your love and attention should be focused on God. That's what I love what it says, you know. How does it say it so beautifully? Don't kiss your children in synagogue. Why? I love him. He's my kid and I'm going to do it. No. The love and the kisses in the synagogue is only for God. You want to kiss your child? Kiss him outside the synagogue. Unless you thank God for giving you your child and then you kiss him. And then kiss God as well. It's all love. <laughs> You get the point, yo. You're there for Hashem. The focus is about God, not about you and not about anything else because when you're focused on God, be holy because I'm holy. You be holy, yo. And I have to give my nephew credit, yo. He got the point. He understood. You're right. It does lead. The kissing does lead to touching and the touching does lead to other things and eventually, God forbid, you could have relations. That's already a huge sin. Wasting seed, having relations, Maybe she's a Goya. Maybe now she's pregnant. Woo! This is a beautiful way to describe this, Satan, just so you understand. So you're having relations with this girl. You're turned on. You like her. Everything is the bomb. 20 minutes, 5 minutes, 7 minutes of pleasure, whatever it is. So he gives you that, right? But does he show you what comes after? Does he show you that she gets pregnant? Does he show you that now you have to take care of this kid for the rest of your life? Does he show you now that you're going to fight with her? She's going to use the kid as a weapon to make you look horrible. She's going to bring other dudes around your kid. Yo, what do you know? Why? Because a man and a woman sin together, they'll eventually hate each other. Yo, you're not understanding. When you go against God, like, like this one friend told me, yo, he married a girl. Yeah, he goes, it's just my soulmate. I mean, how dumb that sounds, yo. Don't say that. He said, why? I said, because it can never be your soulmate. Soulmates from God. God is not going to prove this union goes against his very word why would he approve it no matter what you think have her convert yo I would have even told him yo but not even this wouldn't even work you can't tell her be you know the seven lords of Noah and then still be with her no she has to be a Jew yo it's crazy no no but I love her and she won't convert but rabbi rabbi yo, get out of here then she's not the one what do you think yo the soul made it go smooth there's no problems yo so I just want to remind you you see somebody doing something wrong yo don't say anything yo check the situation see what's going on if everybody in the neighborhood is good with it and even though it's horrible and it's wicked keep your mouth closed yo and Hashem will send you people to warn you no no don't say nothing the dog owners over here are crazy you don't want to get into it with them they'll tell you like that they'll send you people dog park in a residential area all they do is bark all night and it's 10% of the people are horrible dog owners but that's it there's no peace in the neighborhood bro everybody knows it bro but nobody says nothing don't say something bro they're gonna make you look bad they're gonna make you out to look like you're mean like you're the one that's arrogant and rude 
<laughs> yo, these people are great. Yo, when I tell you, don't be an arrogant dog owner. That's all I can tell you, bro. As much as you love that dog, Hashem will snatch that dog away from you, bro. And put you in a deep depression, yo. You better be careful. If you cannot control your dog, give it up to somebody that can. Like a children's book I wrote, yo. The dog that never stopped barking, yo. <laughs> Ever. Until it got a righteous owner, you know what I mean? Just like I told you. With Storm and Amora, what do you think? The owners became gay. The dogs became gay. Why? Avira, avira. They breathe the same air. The same atmosphere. When the sin is around, it's going to penetrate your heart. Be careful, bro. Looking at a modest woman, that's going to penetrate your soul. You don't feel it when you're doing the sin, bro. It's all love. Hashem will give you even extra peace. Nobody will make noise. Everything will be super quiet. No problem. But it's damaging your soul, yo. Just remember that, yo. I love you. Remember that, yo. So with the teeth real quick, remember. Salt pulling, oil pulling, the scaler to get underneath the gum line. Uh, get behind the teeth, in front of the teeth. Uh, get a scraper. There's these little scrapers. or this little tool where you could scrape your teeth, yo. It gets inside under the gum as extra, like cleaning. Yo, really, really good, yo. Just clean your teeth like that. Go up to down and get rid of all the biofilm. The truth is, that's really what you're brushing off is the biofilm that comes from all the sugar, from all the carbohydrates, from all the food mixed with your saliva. So it becomes like a biofilm. So if, they're, if you're eating foods that are really not good, it's going to create bacteria like the sugar and the starch and all these things. So, and by the way, just so you know, these people are so dirty. Bread, bread, don't eat it. Why? Because it's not real bread. There's a pita that I eat. It's flour, water, yeast, and salt. That's bread. No, go look. 73 ingredients in bread. Come on, man. It's all chemicals, bro. They strip it of all the nutrients, put it back with chemicals. They dye it. They bleach it. It's enriched. Stay away from this garbage, yo. Rice should be rice. That's it. Just rice. Not this and that and niacin and riboflavin. And, yo, these people are bugging. They take out the nutrients. Yo, they dye it. They did. Come on, man. Yo, yo, yo. Crazy. And then you see the red dye, the yellow dye. Go Google what this does to mice, yo. Then you're going to know to stay away from it. There's one lady... She was white. She used sunscreen all day. She got skin cancer. How could it be? From the cream. What do you think? These people are evil. Evil, bro. You don't get it, bro. Evil. Money is the root of all evil. All this is all driven by money, yo. That's it for the profit, yo. Coca-Cola. You think they care about your health? They're putting... Yo, I don't even want to know how many grams of sugar down your throat. Phosphoric acid to make sure you don't throw up. Yo, yo, these people are tripping, yo. You're going to tell me they care about you? They don't. Your teeth are going to get damaged. Your health is going to get damaged, yo. Horror show, yo. Horror show. Evil, evil. And then what? The best. The best. It's FDA approved. Okay. So what does that tell you about the FDA, yo? Are you kidding me right now, yo? Come on, man. This world is crazy evil, bro. I don't mean to bring you down, bro. And I'm not because I'll bring you right back up. Just get stuck to Hashem and protect you from all of that, yo. That's how you go right back up. Like a springboard to the Lord, yo. You ever see on the diving board when they spring up? Like that. Yeah, yeah, you had to talk about things that weren't so pleasant. But now it's time to spring back up. Just know you're under the wing protected by God, yo. Just like an eagle protects its young. With his wing spreads out and he hovers over it. That's how Hashem will protect you in the shade of his wing. His right hand will be right by you to thwart off any evil and just so you know just to show you another example of how fake this world is sticks and stones can break my bones but words can never hurt me lies words hurt you more who came up with this garbage yo what they did to Trump they didn't throw a stone they didn't burn him they didn't hit him they didn't even spit on him it's all with words man this dude you would think would have committed suicide 10 billion times by now what they put him through, yo. But he's backed by God. What's Trump's secret? I'll tell you that he backed Israel. That's his secret. Nobody really knows, yo. <laughs> what he did for Israel, that's it. He's set for life. You know, with the lotto, you went for life. But this is even into the afterlife. You don't understand. Like Cyrus, he helped rebuild the temple, yo. How? By putting us in a position like he's gonna when he wins the presidency, yo. He has that power. He has that pull. 
and you can see that God chose him and he's not even like such a great person arrogant a little bit can be a little bit rude makes nicknames this was with a porn star God forbid yo nobody's judging him yo because we could all fall to women yo happened to King David happened to King Solomon happened to Samson happened to Trump and it happened to you you understand so don't ever judge a man you know what I mean give him advice and judge we all judge we understand what it means not to judge meaning when you judge him judge him favorably because everybody judges is part of life I don't judge liar Somebody just came to pick up your daughter to take her out. Yo, you're not going to look. You're not going to check. You're not going to talk to him. You're not going to judge him. Right away, you're going to tell your wife, I like this guy. I don't like this guy. You judge. Stop. Just judge favorably. That's what the Torah says. It doesn't say don't judge. It says judge. Because Hashem understands you're going to judge. But judge favorably. So with Trump, with the women, judge favorably. I already told you. Three giants, yo, that are greater than you'll ever be. Like this one guy, they told you you want to get married, yo. So he said, because every girl you bring me is not a virgin. This guy's about to buy. He's already 40. <laughs> They're trying to help him out. Yo, They're bringing him young women, 26, 25, whatever. <laughs> but they were with guys, you know, secular Jews. What can you do? So the rabbi sat down with him. You know what he told him? He said, can I ask you a question? Are you greater than Joshua? So he said, no, no, God forbid. And he's holding like a book of Joshua in his head. He said, no, 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 rabbi, rabbi, why would you say something like that? He said, what do you mean? Because Joshua married a prostitute. Rahab was still good for him, yo. He still saw the beauty in her, that she feared God, that she was ready to repent. So who are you not to take these girls, yo? I don't understand. We're sending you beautiful girls, and you keep dissing them, claiming they're not virgins. Rahab wasn't a virgin. But Joshua married her, no? He said, you're right. So then he kind of changed and then married one of them, yo. And that's a beautiful rabbi, yo. A little tough, but with class. You understand? That's the key. That's the key. A harsh word will stir up anger, and a calm word will foster peace, yo. You should know this, yo. No matter what you want to say, bro, I already told you, Zachariah was a prophet, a judge, a priest, and he's a pretty big dude, bro. And he, they killed him. Why? Because he dissed them, yo. He was standing above them. He got angry. Everything he said was right. Elijah, everything he said was right. Moshe, everything he said was right. <laughs> and they all got punished. Why? Because they got mad, bro. You don't get it. Dear God, yo. Just like Solomon asked you for wisdom, I do too. But I want to add to that. Protect me from anger. Because to be angry is to be a fool. You're going to lose control. You're going to say things you're going to regret. And it's going to be a problem. You understand? So please get it in your heart deep to be patient, to be loving. To judge favorably and be kind, respectful, with grace, polite. And if you can't be, close your mouth, walk away, and seek peace and pursue it. You see somebody doing something wrong, think a million times before you say something. Because if there's a 1% chance he's wicked, now you stuck to the wicked. Told you, if you live in his building, live in his floor, like, oh, that's what I wanted to tell you, thank Hashem that I just remembered. So this lady that I told you about earlier in the elevator, so she was yelling at this Russian guy. So finally I couldn't take it. So I said to her, you're a bully, yo. You're a bully. I don't even like you. You shouldn't even be talking to this guy like that. Who are you to talk to people like that? Something like that I told her. I said, God is watching. You better be careful. Who are you? She went nuts. So I remember when I got in, the penthouse, I was actually staying on the penthouse. So I remember when I got in the elevator, the penthouse was already pressed. There's 20 people in the elevator, yo. So as the elevator's going up and up and everyone's getting off, guess what? She's on my floor. You understand? Now every time I left, I pumped that prayed to Hashem a billion times. I <laughs> figure of speech, obviously, yo, but I prayed to Hashem that I don't see her. And Hashem made it that I didn't see her that much. Thank God. But the point is, is that you don't know she could live on your floor. And I just gave you the best example, yo. Don't attach to the wicked. And I remember she was defending herself. He shouldn't be by the elevator. Yo, the guy made a mistake, yo. Every mistake you do, we're going to attack you like that, yo. And I remember some guy behind me said, you're right, you're right. I said, yeah, but you know what? I don't feel good about it, yo, because like now I have to see her, this, that. But that was life. That was what happened, yo. Now I learned not to say anything. And if I do say it with so much love, like you're speaking to your mom, so I can tell you, if you cannot find yourself to do that, shh, 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 be quiet, because when your mouth is closed, 
can't get in trouble. Love you. Watch out.